Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Size Garden blog and YouTube channel and I'm here at BBC Gardeners World Live in Birmingham to find some tips for our own gardens. There are a number of really beautiful ideas for your garden at this year's BBC Gardeners World Live. And I'll start with green planting based on leaf contrast. Now, mainly green colour planting schemes could sound boring, but many of the show gardens here at BBC Gardeners World Live 2019 had almost all green borders with perhaps just one or two standout colours. And of course, this is a look that really works all year round. If you want something to look at all year round, think about foliage in your gardens instead of mixed borders of flowers. And the interest comes from the different shades and shapes of the green leaves. For example, here in the Argent front garden, designed by Professor David Stevens, much of the front garden interest comes from differences in leaf shape and colour. And he says that this is because you actually see a front garden more than you see the back garden. So it does need year round interest. Although, of course, not all leaves will, will be there all year round, but it just gives you a structure that is very attractive. Now, part of making this work is variegated leaves, and I saw quite a lot of variegated leaves at BBC Gardeners World Live. Now, around 20 years ago here in the UK, there was a migraine-inducing amount of leaf variegation in gardens. It just seemed that every single leaf was striped or spotted, and suddenly variegated plants became really unfashionable. But actually, if you have one or two variegated leaves in your garden, it really is fantastic. And of course it lights up a dark corner like nothing else. There's a lot of naturalistic planting around and I think one of the trends I thought I might bring into my garden, although I think I might have to persuade my other half that it's a good idea, is not to strim or trim your edges of your lawn. But that's the message that the designer of the Canals and River Trust, Chris Myers, thought that people could take away from the Canals and River Trust garden. Cottage garden planting is something that's really coming up in gardens here in the UK and it's a very easy way of having lots of colour and interest in a garden and of course it's really good for wildlife and for pollinating insects. So where the show gardens at BBC Gardeners World Live were not all green, they had a really cottage garden feel and that's a lively mix of plants and flowers. It's not worrying too much about what the heights are, not really worrying about the colours, just getting different shapes and colours of flowers to attract pollinators. And cottage garden planting also means that you can mix vegetables and flowers in the same bed. And the dahlia garden, designed by John Wheatley, mixed dahlias with vegetables really in a very attractive way. Another look that is really beautiful in gardens at the moment is the idea of combining a garden with a certain amount of industrial or urban reclamation. It's as if nature is just reclaiming its own landscape and it's quite a romantic look. And think about having grasses that grow to quite a height and self-seeded plants in crevices and garden furniture made of reclaimed bits and pieces. The High Line Garden, based on New York's High Line Public Garden and designed by Dan Ryan, was a very good example of this. It was one of those very green planting gardens with very naturalistic planting and grasses that were growing up high and it used cork and steel for a fire pit and other reclaimed materials to make a bench and you just had the feeling that this was a garden that had been carved out of some little bit of either industrial or urban landscape. I also loved the Revelation Garden which was designed by Mike Baldwin and it was designed in, as a number of gardens that you walk from one to the other. It had lots of ideas in it but particularly I enjoyed this huge pair of gates with wilderness planting behind them. It's as if there'd been a great house there which has vanished leaving only its walls and gates behind. A very secret garden feel. And this distressed shed in the Canals and Rivers Trust Garden also fitted into this theme. You could possibly distress your shed or you could just wait for it to look crumbling. One really beautiful trend at the moment is being able to add quite a strong colour by using pots or furniture or cushions. If you have got a largely green garden, you can add real pops of 
brilliant colour with cushions or the pots or maybe just one or two flowers. So I think that's a really easy way of getting vibrant colour into your garden. Another really great idea is having raised beds in front gardens. Professor David Stevens designed the two front gardens for the Young Landscapers Award competition at BBC Gardeners World Live. Two teams then executed his briefs. Both front gardens have raised beds. They're easier to look after and you raise the planting up to where you can enjoy it. And it also occurs to me that raised beds will be a good substitute for a fence or a hedge. They delineate your area clearly and they stop people wandering across your patch, but they are more colourful and more interesting than a fence. The water features had some lovely ideas at BBC Gardeners World Live and there was a certain level of realism which I thought was quite interesting, rather a picking up on the naturalistic trend. And there was this amazing pond with these huge horse sculptures in it and the water sort of cascades around the feet of the horses as if they actually were galloping through and I thought that was quite interesting. And there were also a number of ponds where the water was dropping down as if it was a, a waterfall, even though a rather stylized waterfall. And a couple of streams that looked quite naturalistic. And I think this goes on to the next idea, which is to have variety in your hard landscaping. If you're laying a path, a pond, a driveway, a patio or another surface, then consider using several different kinds of material. You could combine pebbles and brick, or you could combine gravel and brick, and it links to this naturalistic and eco-friendly side of gardening today. Covering either your front garden or your back terrace with a swathe of concrete or with continuous pavers all concreted together is linked to flash flooding in towns and cities. Concrete can't soak up rainwater so it all floods into the drainage system and if there's a big storm it overloads it. And also too much non-permeable hard landscaping affects soil health because worms can't live under acres of paving. But the designs at BBC Gardeners World Life showed that you can have very attractive solutions by varying your paving and your paths. It is important to note, however, that when you lay some gravel, it's not permeable because it has to be set on a concrete base. So do discuss a permeable paving with your supplier or the person who's going to install it. Pavers with gaps in paths were a very nice touch and they relate to a number of things like cottage garden planting and naturalistic planting and environmentally friendly planting. I rather love these pavers in the watchmaker's garden designed by Alexandra Froggart which won best in show. This is just a simple path made of standard pavers with gaps in between and in the revelation garden there was a mosaic pebble path which looked wonderful. And that leads me on to curves in garden design. Now, it can be difficult to plant around curves in smaller gardens because sometimes you create sort of pinch points where there's very little room for planting. But curves do look good and they feel natural. And there were a number of gardens at BBC Gardeners World Live showing how to have curves in small town gardens. I rather like this Here We Go Around the Mulberry Bush Garden designed by Hannah Leonard, which combines traditional planting and contemporary materials. And it gets around the pinch point problem by having the circle in the middle with big curves beds around the edges. And finally, beds in gardens. Has the garden as an outdoor room taken another step forward? There was a big four poster bed in the glimpses of Southeast Asia garden. However, as I left BBC Gardeners World Live, I caught glimpses of a really quite large thunderstorm heading towards it. And I do wonder how outdoor beds would survive in our climate. There are links in the description below to some of the garden designers and to BBC Gardeners World Live. And if you've enjoyed this, please hit like because then I'll know you'd like to see more garden shows. And if you haven't subscribed to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel, we upload on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.